Salutations, new foes. This is your fabulous leader, the Queen of Shade, coming at you with another special presentation. Moving right along, having conversations. I call them interviews, but they're actually conversations with people of interest, people that inspire me. I inspire them, people that are new to me, new to you, or, and also people that you may know. So having said that, I have someone else, someone very, very cool that I just met that I think all of us need to know. And there's a story there. So we're going to talk to him and we're going to get his story and we're going to grow together and learn together. And this will be a fantastic conversation that you will be glad you watched. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you to one word, Zay. Hi, Hi nice to meet you. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. It can be better. Yeah. How's your day going yeah. today? It's Sunday. It's it's going great. It's a good Sunday. Um, I had a good weekend, so I'm just, you know, restarting the week, refreshing. What'd you do over the weekend? Um, went out with some friends, had a good time, you know, the usual for real. <laughs> okay, okay. It's always good to be with friends. Yeah, I don't have too many, I don't have too many of those. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. I keep my I keep it I keep it small. Yeah. So small. <laughs> I don't have too many of those, but I do like a good time. I do like a good time. I'm not really a party person. I'm more of a, but that's because I'm older, Zay. I, I'm thinking, I'm guessing that I'm older than you. you. You haven't confirmed this, but I'm 39. Yeah. I just, so. I just turned 25. Okay. So, okay. So you're a grown man, but you're still man. at the age that, you know, a good little club for you is, is okay. So Yeah. We know once in a while, it ain't too bad. It ain't too bad. Yeah, I'm 39, so honey, I'm I'm ancient, so I'm just like, no. I know you look great. Thank you, thank you so very much. You know, Botox. So let me say, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. So let's get it. <laughs> yeah, I'm funny, Zay. I'm funny. I'm really. Funny. I try, I'm, like, I'm funny too. I, li I like I like people that are funny. I like yeah, sense of humor. like yeah. a sense of humor. And that's yeah. hilarious. I mean, just because I look like I came to a funeral. I mean, it just you know can't <laughs> lay somebody to the gods. But no, okay, it's okay. We came to have fun. Okay, we came to have fun. <laughs> yeah. So tell us, Zay, where are you from? I'm from the west side of Detroit, Michigan. Okay. Yeah, um, I was born January 8th, so yeah. my birthday just passed. I'm a Capricorn. Happy belated. Thank you, thank you. Um, I'm really tall, 6'4", I model, I sing a little bit. Um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of, I'm getting my OnlyFans. My only, I've been doing OnlyFans since May 2020. Yeah. Um, so a lot of that has like blown up for me, especially lately. I'm back to being more consistent so in like the last few weeks I've had you know a lot of a lot of uh, big people that we know you know um you know uh notice me so it feels good it feels good yeah. okay so what I hear is you're from you're from Detroit you said Detroit right yep are you still in Detroit now yep right now as we speak I'm actually um actually not too far from where I was born in Detroit I live like kind of close to there so same neighborhood okay same neighborhood is your family still there yeah, my family is still here. Yeah, oh, everybody, yeah. everybody's here. Um, I have like a couple cousins out of state and stuff like that, but the majority of us are here in Detroit. Okay. Are you an only child? Nope. I actually have five siblings. I'm a middle child. Wow, five. Yeah. Yes. Ooh, that's a big family. Yes, we have a big family. My parents are uh, they're still together. They've been together for 27 years. Oh, that's so beautiful. Yeah. They, um, you had your mommy mm -hmm. and your daddy. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that's, no, that's good because, like, okay, okay, listen. I am from, I started in the projects of Philadelphia and then I was moved to the suburbs by my grandmother who became a teacher. But I didn't have my mother or my father. My mother was 17 when she had me. My father was 28. That's a crime, but we're not going to go into that. that <laughs> right. that's, that's their crime. How be yeah. I got here, but my mother, she had a lot of like abuse happen to her by the, at the hands of her father real early. So she, you know, got into, it was the eighties, you know, there was drugs and different things like yeah. that. And then mental illness was present in her and my father. So I didn't have either one of them, but my grandmother, my grandmother, my uncles and my aunts, they did their damnedest to raise me and my three siblings. I'm the oldest of four. 
And uh, my grandmother always used to say to me, she always said that to me, and she still says it sometimes, you are not a throwaway child. So exactly. it's good to hear the other side of the coin where someone has their, you know, has the family setting. Because I was talking to two men the other day, um, mm -hmm. Alex Jonte and his husband-to-be, Kyle Evans. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about the fact that it's dangerous to go throughout the world thinking that everyone has the same experience that you do. Yeah. It's dangerous to say, because him and I, we had driver's ed in, in high school and Kyle, Alex and I had um, driver's ed, Kyle did not. So we're running around, you know, going, oh my God, you could have took my life. Don't you know, you, you read the same book I did. You had the same class I did. And it's like, no, they didn't. And yeah. what I realize is that metaphor also applies to life because each and every one of us, we meet each other and we don't necessarily have the same upbringing or the same, or, or all of our needs met. Exactly. You know, this, makes, this makes each person a little different because say, you know, like say for dating, it, it changes things because if you're a person, and it matters, I, that's why I brought this up this, this early in the conversation, because it matters. It matters. If you come from a home where you have your mother and your father and you're used to seeing that unit work together. And then you have somebody like me who comes from a dif dysfunctional home at times. And, you know, the lack of communication and the internalization of emotion and things that you should be able to say and things that you should be able to let out, it would be very difficult for us at times because our upbringings are different. Mm -hmm. so that's why I brought that up because I want people to understand that I applaud people on the other side of the track that you know they have their mothers and their fathers and it doesn't mean that it was perfect. Like exactly. It, yeah, it, it, doesn't <laughs> yeah. Mean, yeah, it doesn't mean that everything was just perfect and you had this amazing childhood. But I find that children like me, and I, I can only speak for me, children like me, um, I've had 15 years of therapy, but before the therapy, I had a, a huge hole in my soul. There was a huge hole. Yeah. I, I was missing that maternal and paternal love and attention and need that need for it. So it kind of sent me out into the world, kind of looking for a mom and a dad. Yeah, exactly. You know? And, yeah. it, and it's, it's better when you give your child, you know, and like I said, it's not perfect, but it's better when your child sees a presence sees of both. mom and dad, because, because this is what you don't do, Zay. You don't go out in the world looking for other people to validate you. Mm -mm. You've already mm -mm. been validated at home. Exactly. You see? Exactly. So I'm sorry. Yeah. I just went on a little tangent real quick. No, I understand. I definitely understand. Yeah. And I get it because, you know, being that I do have a parents, like you said, it's not always good. And we've just really like started establishing a relationship because we went through a lot of bad things and a lot of things that question if I wanted to, you know, communicate with them anymore or if they wanted to communicate with me anymore. My, my sexuality for one, like me, me coming out as a gay man, you know, that's that was a lot for my dad because he's a, a guy from Detroit, like, you know, like he's from the hood. So he not used to seeing things like that. Like, so it's just like, he didn't know how to take it. Like, yeah. and when he, when he first seen it, he didn't like it, you know, we didn't talk. Like, and, and that was fine with me because like, I don't need validation. Like you said, I don't need validation. Need I know who I am. Yeah. And once I knew who I was, I was able to tell him who I was. And he didn't understand why I didn't tell him. I said, that's because I didn't know who I was. So how can I tell you somebody that I don't know who I am? I can't tell you something that I'm not. Yeah. So in that moment, you know, things like that, like it has, it's just made me who I am and it's brought us closer, but yeah. And I, I definitely applaud those, you know, who, who still are strong that have one parent in their home and stuff, because I have friends that's like that. And, yeah. you know, and they, and they're some of the strongest people I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, both sides are strong, but I, like, I, I was passed around my family. It was an uncle and an aunt. And, but yeah. Like, grandma's. And, yeah. yeah. But grandma you. was like the one that grandma is always everybody. <laughs> yeah. She my, grandma kept is like everybody. Of, my grandma is my best friend. So yes. I understand that. <laughs> yes. My grandma is my best friend. She was my business partner when I first started this venture. And then she assumed the role of more advisory. And I love her mm -hmm. in that role because we stopped fighting because yeah. my thing was, I, I am not just a talent. I am also the brain behind the talent. So I knew how I wanted to do it, what I wanted to do. And, you know, it's kind of difficult when you have to tell someone, thank you for your input, but I'm going to do it my way. Yeah. 
you know, that kind of makes yeah. them feel like, well, damn, what you need me for? You know, right. <laughs> you know, or you just need me for my money, you know? And it's right. like, you know, it's like, no, I don't just need you for your money. I need you for your input, but I have wings and yeah. I've developed these wings over 20 years and I'm going to use them the way that I know to use them because yeah. you can't fly for me. Yeah, we yeah. have to elevate, you know, yeah. we have to elevate in life. Yeah, so, yeah. no, but that's, that's amazing. So my, my thing is you, and you brought that up. Um, I came from a family. Now, this is the thing. They were devout Christians, all of them. Um, but get this, all of my aunts and my uncles on the side that raised me, all of my aunts and uncles, every last one of them on my mother's side was gay and lesbian every single one. I have four, I had four, uh, I have two uncles, two aunts. One uncle died of AIDS complications back in 2005. And the other one is still alive. He kicking and doing whatever he want to do out in the world in California. But, um, and my aunts are here too, but they're living their lives. But for a long time, there was this denial. There was this, I'm born again. I'm Christian. I'm holy. I have to deny my flesh. That was what they were kind of like teaching. And then I came along and I, I had an epiphany because my thing is I've always been very spiritual. I'm a shaman myself. So that's, I'm an African shaman. So I am a shaman. I'm a prophet. I'm an oracle. I'm a seer. I'm a healer. Those are five gifts that I have in addition to all of the talent and the brain, you know, all of the the, yeah. the knowledge that I have. I have a lot going on with me. So my attitude was God made me to be who I am. Exactly. He actually, he actually fashioned me to do this. You ain't know, like you ain't know. <laughs> you ain't listen. This is the resistance. Like you didn't know, honey, I'm a part of the revolution. Like, yeah. this, like this, this was the attitude that I had. And exactly. it rendered me homeless. It rendered me homeless at 19. They all put me out and it was crazy. I went through that too. I went yeah, through that too. I was gonna I, say. I did. Yeah, yeah. I was I gonna did. say. So let's yeah. so let's say that for let's let's talk about that because we're on your early years right now. So your father, you tell your father and your mother that you're homosexual. What happens? Um, my mom knew before anybody. She knew a year prior to him even knowing. I just text her, and I was because I was in a relationship. Right. And I came out with my ex boyfriend, and when I came out with him. I wanted her to know before anybody. I made a decision. Me and him talked about it. I said, okay. I said, I'm going to tell my mom before I tell anybody. So I texted her and she was like, well, let's either two things. She said, you're either gay or you got somebody pregnant. <laughs> she, she didn't beat around. My mom is my mom is like very blunt. So she would get yeah. straight to the point. Yeah. Um, so I said, I was like, well, I'm gay. And she was like, well, I always knew. She said, you're my son. She said, I always knew. She said, I was just waiting for you. And I was like, okay. So she, she took it. She took it like, she already knew, so she took. She already took right. it in. She carried you, know, you. Yeah, yeah, and she she was fine with it. My dad, on the other hand, I was um um in job core. I was doing um like you know getting the home skill up under my belt and stuff like that. Right. The skills up under my belt, and um I had came home off a of break, and me and him didn't see eye to eye. He seen me. I had like red hair. My hair was red and long. And um, he was like, I was like, yes, I'm gay. And I said it straight like that. And he was just like, well, okay, I don't get it, but I'll try to understand it. And then like a week later, we kind of had a really big argument and I left and I moved out. I was like 18, about to be 19. And I moved out and I started, and I just lived as an adult from that point. And here I am now, like, we're, we're cool though. Like we had, we, we stopped talking for like a year, yeah. um, but it, that's what we needed. We needed space because he didn't under he didn't he wasn't ready to accept or understand me yeah. and i couldn't i couldn't you know force nobody to do that i said what i said and i left it alone yeah and i let him take that knowledge in and when he sent me you know when we did see each other everything was fine he walked up to me and everything like he was like you're my son i love you he was like i'm not mad about nothing like that he was like that's all and we moved on and ever since then, it's honestly, it brought us closer because we were never really close. But but you know what it did also? It was your first stance as a man. You were yeah. like, I'm out. Like, um, yeah. that's who I am. And, and you stood by your stance. And and a real man is going to respect that. A real yeah. man. And that's all he could do. And that's yeah. all he could do. He was exactly. like, that's what you he said it. You said it, Zay, because that was all he could do. Yeah. My father, on the other hand, was never a part of my life. And then I go to visit him as a grown up before I leave for Paris to be a model. And he wants to fight me because he's asking me if I'm gay. And I'm like, oh, how dare you ask me a question? I don't owe you anything. You're not a part of my life. 
I'm here to just visit before I move to another country. How yeah. dare you ask me that on the first time seeing me? It's none of your business. So he proceeded to want to fight me in the street like a dog. And he's like, why can't you just say that you're gay? I said, why? I see, I'm intelligent. I said, yeah. why, why do I have to say something you already know? And that's the thing. He got quiet as hell. My grandmother said, boy, if you don't leave that, that boy, that man alone. Like she told him, boy, you better leave that boy alone. That boy knows exactly who he is. Leave him alone. He, he playing with you. He toying with your intellect right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So it's just nice. And I'm, and I'm doing this because it's just nice to compare notes sometimes. Yeah, it is. You know, it's just nice. And, and my thing was, see, when I moved out, I did, I did too. I too had a job. Like I was homeless for a lot of uh, my twenties and I kept a job. I think I had one year where I was not working. That was it. I kept a job the whole time I was homeless, sleeping on couches and my friends' floors and, you know, being- I was in a relationship and all. So yeah, like it was, uh, I bounced like my life cause my relationship ended and- Was I he was older in than you? Huh? Was he older than you? Um, that my first relationship when I came out, we were the same age. Okay. Um, that relationship ended. Um, it ended like a year after I, like in the same time after I moved out, like maybe two months or so after I had moved out. So we were together for a while as kids, but you know, it was just that really wasn't a real relationship in my mind. It was a real relationship because you know when you're in it, you're like there. But when I got into the my last relationship, I've been single for two years now. Okay. And when I got into my last relationship, I was dating a transgender woman. Oh, and we fell in love and we went through it all like it kind of woke me up that it was my first real relationship and it kind of just made me understand my self-worth and what I deserve and it made me realize who I was more and more and more like it opened up a lot it was a, it was just a lot of good it was a lot of bad but the bad I went the good so it happened oh you know and so I've been through a lot yeah. This is so good. We're going to talk about it, but I'm so glad because you're the second person to tell me they found love in the arms of a transgender woman. And it's just like, I, just, I used to I date women. Yeah. So I used to date women. So I'm kind of like, I, I came out as gay, but I'm pansexual. I'm kind of open to everything. I, I go okay. off the vibes. Yeah. yeah. And that's okay. You go off the vibe and that's okay. Yeah, that is okay. And you know, most people, I was telling my grandmother last night because we were talking about another interview um, guest that I had and she was like, oh my God, he has children. This is that and the other. And I looked at her and I said, she's 74. So I looked, at, I, looked, I looked at her and I'm like, and you had, you had five, five children and four of them were gay. Come on now, get with it. So I, I looked at her and I said, I said, yeah, I said, gay men can do anything and everything that a straight man can do, if Ooh. not more. I had to let her know. I'm like, yeah, we father children yeah. <laughs> the natural way. Like this you know? happens. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> like I don't, and see, that's one thing that I don't understand is that, you know, heterosexuality, they try to distance themselves from us, but they can't. You can't. A man is a put us man. in a box. Yeah, you can't put a, us in a, a box. Man. A man is a man. Exactly. No matter what, no matter where, no matter who he's sleeping with, a right. man is a man and he's going to be a man. <sighs> okay, so moving yeah. on. So moving on. So let's talk about um job core. What, what skill did you pick up? Um, I was doing networking cabling. So like I used to make HDMI cores, cabling uh -huh. cords, uh, you know, stuff like that, the little wire and thing. For the cable yeah. companies. Yeah. No. Okay, good. Oh, does that skill does that skill still serve you today? Um, sometimes. I mean, I don't work in that field. Um, I'm more of like self-employed now. And stuff I was like getting that. ready to say we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more self-employed now. So, but throughout when I do, because I do have like um, you know, HDMI cords and stuff in the house, so I do know how to fix them if I need to. Yeah, so that it came in handy in life. <laughs> well, trust me, if I need to fix an HDMI cord, I'm gonna call you. I'm like, okay, I got you. <laughs> what do I do? Walk me through the tutorial. Give me, okay, yeah. You know, give Real me, quick step. <laughs> yeah, I actually got the chance to go to Detroit one time. I, I went there for a convention at your convention center downtown, mm -hmm. and I believe where we were you could see canada across the, the water oh water yeah. okay yes okay i think you probably were in hard plots okay because we yeah. could see there's a lot of there were a lot of hotels and there was like this main like convention place 
And then when you went to like the restaurants and the lounge bars and stuff like that in the place, you could see Canada across the way. Oh, yeah, yeah. You were right in her plaza. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, I went there because I was a young man trying to get into wealth. So I started early um, with a network marketing company, a multi-level you know, um, marketing company. And I was there and we were meeting the founders and we were, it was like a training for us. Now, mind you, that was 2007. I was young. I was very young, but I was trying to get like make my way into wealth I needed that yeah. I needed wealth so and I had to work hard so I believed in working hard and that was the chance I got to go to Detroit and it was lovely it was lovely um the 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 area the, the place everything was lovely about it um I haven't been to Detroit since oh it looks so different huh? it, looks so, it looks so different now like you know they updated everything so it looks like like really really different but it looks the same like it's like the same would you say that Detroit has a, a heavy um, African American population? Definitely, definitely. Okay. We are predominantly Detroit. Detroit is so big. Um, okay. We even like the little outside cities, like Southfield. Like you know, we have our suburban cities and stuff like that. Right. Um, pop black people, like you know, right. all like everywhere, like we're everywhere. That's <laughs> my, no, because I, I think you're the third young man that I interview from Detroit. Yeah, you're the third. The really? first one, yeah, the first one was Laban King. He's a huge uh -huh. mogul and musician and producer and record owner, a record label owner. And just, he's just, Laban is just everything that is everything that is amazing. <laughs> so it was him and then Jamar, uh, Jamar Moraine. I, oh, yeah, I know Jamar. Yeah, I interviewed yeah. him and he was also from Detroit. And now you. So I'm like, Detroit is showing me love. So I'm like, hey, you know? Detroit, honestly, I love it here. I love my city. I love my city so much. And I'm just, I'm, I'm glad to be from here. Like, a lot of people don't understand. Like, you know, when you're from here, you ready to go. Because that's anybody. When you're when you in your city, you ready to go. Yeah. But you love your city at the end of the day. Like, yeah, I do yeah. too. No matter how much. I'm preparing to move to, to, to uh, uh, Europe. And I still love Philadelphia. I always love Philadelphia as long as I live. Yeah. <laughs> and, but yeah, but yeah, I, I, I'll sneak back every now and then. I will. Yeah. I'm not going to tell nobody that I'm here. But I'm Yeah, you know, you got to just do your pop-up. <laughs> yeah. Hi. You know. Hi. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, tell me, did you go straight after Job Corps? Did you go straight into the workforce or did you, um, was there any college involved? Yeah, I went straight into the workforce. I decided okay. not to do college because okay. I, I was so focus in school like you know like I graduated on time and everything yeah. so I was like you know I want to I want to make money um right. coming out but I worked while I was in school I worked at Taco Bell while okay. I was in school okay. and then I went from that and I ended up being a manager at Subway so okay different location so, so yeah those are jobs that a young yeah. man you know but it, my yeah. god but a manager at your age that was good that was good that was yeah, good. I was like 19 I was like 19 20 19 20 years old yeah you didn't play no games because if you was a manager you had to manage all them people underneath you yeah I tell them all listen here now girl you ain't gonna be giving all these nails all along digging in this tuna <laughs> all in the tuna yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm messing i'm messing i told yeah. you i told you in the beginning i'm good i'm good babe. Yes, so I'm good. you turn around and you float around and you're doing what you do and you pick up a skill and then comes Ended up being in a relationship in 2017. That's when I met my ex-girlfriend. Um, okay. We dated. We, we we became friends first. Okay. We actually knew each other for a while. Because, um, you know, the, the gay community is small, so everybody knows everybody. Uh, yeah. Social media, Instagram, all of yeah. that. So all of that plays a, a, a part in that. Um, yeah. We met. We became friends. Um, then we started dating like a year later. Oh. And then uh, we stopped dating two years ago. Okay. And, but in between that time, like I, I really grew up. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we we grew up with each other. So you know when you grow up with somebody, y'all build each other up, and y'all yeah, show each other you. things y'all never seen. Yeah, you always love each other too. Yeah. Yeah, that's so. Good. It's no, it's no hate there. It's always gonna be you know love there, like regardless. Like we don't talk or nothing like that. But mm -hmm. I, it's no bad blood. Like I don't live with. I can't live with like a burden on me. Like you know it was what it was. Yeah. And we grow. We move on. Life moves on sometimes. So okay, so that's how I feel. and it's a good philosophy. It's a good philosophy. Mm -hmm. So you break up with her, and then what I, I start my OnlyFans. 
OnlyFans. I was um, going to say, and then what do you started do? Started my OnlyFans after that. Um, I think we were broke up for like three months, and then I started my OnlyFans. Okay. Um, my OnlyFans took off. Okay. I went from zero followers to 10K in like six months. Okay. And then now I'm at 25.4K. Yeah. Um, and it's still I have, it's, it's been, it's been, I went to Atlanta the first time, me having OnlyFans. So May, May 2020, I made my OnlyFans. That pride, I went. That, that year pride, I went in September. Yeah. Um, is I, I met my photographer. I met a lot of, uh, you know, people who love hip hop, like all different, different types of shows and stuff in Atlanta. Like I really had a good time yeah. and I networked and it built me up and built me up. So um, me being a porn star is kind of something I always wanted to do. Okay. And I don't really care what nobody think about it. At okay. All. <laughs> all right. Can't nobody, can't nobody make me feel no type of yeah, way. Yeah, like you I, I'm with you. I'm like, please. Like this is something I decided to do. So yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm, and, confident. I'm confident. And you're self-employed. Exactly. Ain't nobody paying your bills but you. But me. Exactly. And I'm, I, 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 I like money. Money yeah. makes me talk, makes me walk. You know? You're Capricorn. <laughs> You're Capricorn. You're yeah, Capricorn. I'm, That's why. exactly. Yeah, I'm about that. I'm about that scrilly. So oh. my money is is my my go to. Like, and I love I love that I, I get to network with different people too. See, it's not always all about the money. It's about the experience as well. Yes. People forget that, and they get drunk with, oh, I have followers and probably they forget that they're real people for real. Like, you yeah. still have to have manners. And you still have to have. You know, just you just have to be a, a good person. Like a mutual mutual respect is a thing, and they forget that in the OnlyFans where they get behind behind themselves and don't, you know they, they they let it get to their head. They do. <laughs> but my thing is, at the end of the day, it's all we're all serving the public. Exactly. You know? So so my thing is, you know, you and I both we come from the past where we've had to work customer service jobs. So my my philosophy is I had to work that. So I'm not gonna treat somebody nasty. Nasty. Um, because I had to do it. I know what it's like. I know what it's like to have people treat me nasty and so exactly. You know, you know so and you're supposed to grow. I remember that. So yeah. you know, it's so funny because I'll, I'll take the opportunity while I'm standing at a Walmart counter and I'll be like, and it's so, it's so funny because my grandmother looks at me because she's like, they didn't expect that. Because like, I, I say hello and if the, I look at the name tag. Hey, Sydney, how are you today? And he's like, I'm doing good. I'm like, long shift? He's like, hell yeah. I'm like, when are you done? You know, he's like, oh, I'm done, uh -huh. I'm done at eight. I have a whole conversation. I'm like, they oh, like that. Yeah. We like like that that it, it, it's a relief. It's like okay, they for, they they know that I'm still a person. I'm not just yeah, like robot to them. Yeah, yeah, but yeah exactly. Yeah, they exactly. see. You. Yeah, and I've and and it's so crazy because even my my grandmother makes me call all the stores that we patronize because and let them know <laughs> that I'm coming or ordering something because they all know me. And they all like because of my report, I treat them like human beings. This mm -hmm. is the reason why I went. I I asked you to come on because my thing is I have I have interviewed several several adult stars from Jason Zhu to um, Adrian Hart to you know just a lot of lot of different stars. And then mm -hmm. I moved into you know my babies. Oh my God! I did Fame and I did Rico Pruitt and <laughs> you know like these are my babies. You know I know I've known them for a while now and I like to bring on like you said the the self-employed only fans porn star boys because I want people to understand that first of all you guys are very intelligent it's not just oh I'm making money from just showing my body no 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 there's a whole brand behind this exactly and it's a whole it's a whole strategic way to do it it's not just oh uh you post this and you post to get money. Like, no, it's 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 a way about going about it. It's a way you do it. It's it's a respect behind it. It's a class behind it. Yeah. It's it's all of that. And and it's the way and it's your mindset. Mm -hmm. Your mind at the end of the day, all everything is a mind thing. It's all about how you move up here. Yes. Yes. That's, and they don't and they don't get it. They don't get it. So and that's why I like to tell people, like, you know, it's more than what the eye, it's more than what you think. It's more than what you think. When you don't do it, and then when people find out when they do have, get an all fans and they find they'd be like, oh no, I see what you're talking about. Like it's really like it's it's fun, like it's an experience. Like for me to travel, I've never traveled this much. Like I right. am from the hood. Like, you know, I I be I be in one spot like I don't grow up you know in one state for real like I, don't get me wrong I've been to Arizona like been to places like that but I've I've flown went there and just came straight back but that was as a kid but as an adult like I'm traveling now I'm getting to yeah. see everything and I was gonna say where are some of the places that you've been so far 
Um, well, I actually just came back from New York. Um, I went there from the 25th to the 27th of this last past week. So that was beautiful. I've never seen so much city in my life. <laughs> yeah. um, I went to Atlanta, like I said, um, in the beginning, the first time I started my OnlyFans. So I went yeah. there. I drove down there. So I drove. I've, I've drove to Atlanta like twice. I went to Alabama. Yeah. Um, I've been to Miami. I went to Miami for my, my 23rd birthday. Okay. Um, I've been to Las Vegas. Yes. And that's about it so far. You wait till you start going international. You're gonna, yeah. you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna be, you're gonna be over the moon. Because it, I, it, I, I, I love it. I don't like to sit down. I like to yeah. move. I like to keep busy. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. So I like to travel. It's amazing, <laughs> but it's amazing, and and that's what's so funny is because we have, you know, we have people that think, oh, you know, OnlyFans, it's so degrading. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's not. When I first started in the business of entertainment, one of the first things, well, it was I modeled first, then came, I was a phone sex agent. I played because of my voice. I played a girl for two years on the phone and spoke to men from all over. And it just, it was like, and the thing was, I was in a call center with all girls and they were very jealous of my voice. And it just, you know, it was just like, oh, he's a natural. He, know, he doesn't need any training. And, and, and for me, it was so much fun. It wasn't yeah. a quadri. I, I could see how the young ladies could feel some type of way about it, feel degraded. The men are like, you know, because sometimes you get those men and I did too, but you got to be smart. You got to know what to say to break mm -hmm. them out of it. So to break them out of it. So, you know, you, some of the girls would call, you know, some of the girls would get a call and they're like, hey, this is Carol. You know, this is Cindy. This is, you know, Felicia. This is, you know, Veronica, Brenda or Kat. My, my name is Catherine and I, I went by Kat. But, um, you know, you get the men that are just like, shut up and moan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's the same thing with Twitter. Like, they, yeah. men, are so, men are so demanding. Like, yeah. they be like, send me news. And I just be like, <laughs> um, no. <laughs> <laughs> they are, it's the exact same. So I understand. Right. But I you get see? The yeah, I get the critics and everything. See, people don't understand. We <laughs> service men. <laughs> men. Aggressive, crazy ass yes, men. Yes, <laughs> crazy ass men. And it's like, oh my God. <laughs> they don't get it. <laughs> those that know, no. Those that don't, yeah. don't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the crazy thing was I was in high school and I was running track. And I remember one day, I tell this story all the time because it tickles me so much. I was on the I was on the track, um, the track. Uh, uh, the actual, the actual track, and I'm walking around doing exercises and drills with the whole track team, mm -hmm. and I'm talking, and I notice that every guy is quiet, and this is a whole, these are a lot of guys, every guy is quiet. So then finally, I'm like, I'm I'm not talking to myself. Who? Why are y'all so quiet? And the guy says to me, one of the guys say, if you ever do phone sex, call me. And then everybody's like, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah. And I threw a fit that day. I was like, how dare you? I'm going to be a doctor. I'm not going to be a phone sex agent. And then years later, I'm picking up the phone. Hey, this is Kat. I'm here. <laughs> so no like I understand that so so like that let's stay there for a second so you've built this huge clientele it's allowing you to travel how do you find we, we just said how demanding men can be yeah. what um allows you to stay up to speed with their demands what allows you um to I'm a very simple person so um I, I'm I'm very communicative when it comes to my Twitter. Like I tweet I tweet about the things the way you should come. Yeah. At me. And yeah. they don't know how to read. Uh. So, <laughs> apparently, those that don't know how to read, I reiterate and I reiterate in a way where you try video. Understand. Try video. Yeah. If you say it in a the video, then they'll see it. And my and that's and that's how I am. Depending on how they DM me, I will send them a priceless instantly. That's my response. Yes. Or my or the screenshot of that cash app. Yes. Because you can't you you can't play me out of my body. Yeah. I cannot be played. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> it's impossible. <laughs> And I have to let them know that. <laughs> I love you. 
Already. I love you. I, I, love, love, you. Love, you. I love your energy. I was just I about to tell you that. You. He said you can't <laughs> play me in my body, about my body. Like, you can't play me. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't. I cannot be played. Like, and I, I would, but I'm really, I'm really, um, I'm really just straightforward. Like everything pretty much is in my bio, like custom videos, you know, da, 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 you gotta have this, this, and this. Like I'm I'm real straightforward. So yeah. they pretty much don't give me a hard time. Um I have those that do, of course. Yeah. You know, you always have the few. Um, I have the critics, you know, that I live around in the community because I am, you know, I'm known, I've been known before I'm my yeah. own fans. Yes. from instagram and yes. um i used to i used to fight a lot when i was younger too oh, but, God. but i'm a di- i'm different now i'm grown okay. Okay. <laughs> i was 18 then i'm 25 okay. now so you know, i'm a, it's different like yeah i got i got all of that i experienced all of that i let all of that go um yeah. me being known for because i used to model like i yes. said i used to model on instagram and stuff like yes. that um i've known i'm known from that so now it's i'm known from only so it's a different it's a different look because not everybody is seeing me in this different eye that I've seen for years. So now when I go in the in the bars and in the club, they just they're looking at me and like you say and you're you know, and it's just it's so it's so different now. It's just right. it's different. And sometimes the, the attention can be it's good normally. Like, you know, I, I like it. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be fake. I do like the attention, but yes. sometimes it is irritating. Yeah. Because sometimes it's too much. Because you know why, though? Because honestly, they've seen everything. So the next, (laughs) they get it. The next thing they want after you listen, especially with men, when we see something that is desirable, the next thing is to experience it. Exactly. 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 And a lot of men are, they they, they want to get what they want. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when you have to tell them, baby, this is a business. (laughs) You exactly. Have slow, man, you have to slow them down, like baby. This is a business. Okay, let me put my suit on. My yeah, you know, like, hold, hold, on, hold on. on. Let me let me put on my glasses. Okay. Yeah. These are the they, these are the terms and conditions. Yeah. <laughs> the terms and the conditions. So I like that because I like this is a good story. So I like that your choice because you wanted to, you know, not because you were forced or anything like that, is paying off for you. It is successful. Well, I. I've seen, I know why it's successful. I've seen, but um, you know, like I'm like, Thank I've, you. Seen. <laughs> I've seen, you're beautiful. I've seen. Thank you so much. I think, wait, let me, I ain't gonna show on camera, but let me just, let me just check something real quick. Mm-hmm. Let, me let me see, let me see. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. I love yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've seen. There, yeah, I, yeah, I've seen. And, it, and it's <laughs> remarkable. And you know what I love? I love that a Black man is getting ahead for the first time with something that the world has tried to take from him. You know, exactly. everybody has this fantasy about Black men. So it's mm-hmm. nice that Black men are capitalizing off of the fantasy now. Because it's like, y'all want us. Now, why can't we be our own CEOs and, exactly. and keep control of, of us? us. <laughs> Yeah, I love that that so much. So tell us, okay, so this is the thing. Like we said, the attention is crazy. So everybody wants to know. Tell us what you like to do for fun. I mean, you did say that you like to go out every now and then, but tell us like what, like hobbies, do you like nature? What do you like music? Tell me what you like to do for fun. I love music. Um, I love music a lot. Um, I sing a little bit. I can't sing now, I'm a little hoarse, but I'm, I'm building my voice back. Yeah. Um, I do smoke weed, but you know that's good for that's good for the environment. You know they legalized it here first. It okay. got legalized here first, so okay. I feel like yeah. Um, okay. I'm really just I'm a I, I, I play cards like I have an old song too, like at all at the same time. Like I just like to have a good time. Um, really, with my friends for real. Like I'm I'm close with pretty much the people that I live with, I live with my roommates or whatever. Yeah. We all like this, so yeah, we all just. We just chill for real, have a good time. I'm like goofy, fun. Like, which one of them? How many roommates do you have? I have four. So which ones? And, and Detroit is, is probably a big house. Um, what? Uh, which one of you, out of the four of you, which one of you is the brass tack business guy? Um, I would say my friend Lance. He would be the the business guy. Okay, who's the goofball? <laughs> my brother Millie. Okay. Who's, who, who's the sex siren? me <laughs> uh, uh, uh. me who's the wild child the boyfriend I, I, I would say we I would say I would say I would say um my friend Derek and Millie 
Because Derek is quiet, but Derek. Yeah, no, 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 they heard you. you hear a laugh? <laughs> <laughs> there. So, okay, now we one more. Who's the reserved? No, guys, let's chant. Let's be harmonious. Oh, nobody. <laughs> nobody. <laughs> I knew that answer. I knew that was. Nice. I just, I'm just so glad. I'm so glad that we are talking because you I get the opportunity to chat with you. And it's just like it's so amazing. And there's still so much more time. Like it, it's not over. We're just gonna delve into, you know, your yeah. dreams, your goals, your aspirations. So now that you are free, let's say it like that. Now that you are free and now that you are an ent independent entrepreneur, what are some of the things that you see yourself in the next like I don't even want to put a time frame on it. What are some of the things you see yourself wanting to do? Like what, what kind of goals do you want to achieve? And it can be anything as much as like for me, uh, one of my biggest goals was, and I've, I've been in the, the entertainment industry 20 years. I started the Queen of Shades six years ago and you know, she's music and she does all of these things. And one of her, my biggest goal, the reason I started was to return to Paris. But yeah. now I'm like, okay, I'm going to work in Paris. I'm going to live in a tropical place. You know, like, so like, what are your goals, your dreams? What do you, what do you want to make happen with your freedom? Because you have freedom. Exactly. I was just about to say that um, I really just come on to continue to travel the world because I haven't seen everything that I wanted to see. Um, I haven't had a chance. This is my first time having a chance for me, like you said, like, like freedom. Like yeah. I've, I, I went through a lot, you know, like yeah. as, a, as a child, like I didn't have a child. I was an adult my whole life. Yeah. Um, in a relationship, out of relationship, in a relationship for a long time, out of a relationship. Now I'm, now I'm me. So it's like, yeah, I want to be able to just see the world, see everything I, I haven't seen, do everything I haven't done. Um, I really just want, I really want to model so bad. Like yeah. Calvin Klein is one of my biggest dreams is to be on, on the front of that or in Times Square coming across that. that you're, tall. you're tall, you're tall, you're tall. Yeah, I'm 6'4". Yeah, you're tall. Yeah. No, this is the thing, and I and this is the thing. I come from a, a fashion background. I'm still in the fashion community. Don't let anyone discourage you. Don't let anyone say, "Oh, because you did only dance, you can't." I know right now. I know models that are models because they became famous as, as adult stars. Yeah. And the and this is the thing about fashion. All of the designers, they're gay. They're gay. They're us. And that's what, and, and that's exactly what the straight men don't understand when we tell them yes, that it's the pants that they're wearing is it's a fashion designer that's gay. They, oh, no, 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 yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So there's what I'm saying is there's a lot more leeway, especially if you are traveling and you're cool and you are cool and you're, right. you know, you're, say you're in Miami, you're vacationing and you, you meet, you know, these designers and they're loving you. You, you, you can literally, I've seen it happen. I've seen adult stars come down runways in Europe with no problem. And that's one thing I do love about my community, the fashion community, is because all the misfits, that's what I call myself, a, yeah. a misfit, because I missed and did not fit. In. Did not fit in. Yes, I did yeah. not. I was Me neither. Yeah, so, <laughs> and, and fashion has, come on, girl, come on. You know, come on, girl, yeah. come over here. Come over here, bring all of that. What is <laughs> you're a soprano, bring, bring that right here. We know exactly what to do with that. We know what to do with that. And it's so wonderful. It's so great. And, and my thing is because the, like the fashion industry saved my career, it did. Um, and because of that, like I love, like with me, I'm a shaman too. So oh. I, I'm too spirited. I'm not transgender. Yeah. It's, I'm a boy in a, in a wig and a dress and jewelry you know right. and lipstick and makeup that that's right. me i i very much have an outside presence a presence where i'm just bald headed and doing whatever i'm doing running around beating up guys you know you know right <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so fashion was the first place that allowed me to showcase that and they were trying to get me to showcase that when i was actually 22 i wasn't ready for the showcase then they were like yeah you got to do the girls shows you got to do the women's shows because of your body and your face and i was like no my family's christian and i can't do that yeah yeah but now yeah. you know at 39 i'm better late than never i'm doing it I, I'm mad at you. Yeah, no, but I was thinking, uh, you have to go to places like uh, Amsterdam. 
Yeah, my, one of my friends actually just went there. I was uh, when I was when I landed in New York, she was landing. She was taking off to Amsterdam. I'm like, wow. Okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah. good to go down there. You gotta go. And and my thing is too. What I love too. At, look, you're now you're an entrepreneur, so you know this. Advertise, advertise, advertise everywhere. That and, location pin yeah. is so strong. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. Oh, it's so strong. Yes. I'm telling you. Yes, yes. The minute I, I touch I, down anywhere I have not been, they be like, <laughs> oh yeah, okay, we own that. Yes. <laughs> yes. And and the Dominican Republic. You have to go to the Dominican Republic. Yeah, I definitely um I wanted to travel to the DR. I was just talking about that like a week ago. I, I, I wanna I wanna I gotta go get my passport and I'm ready. Right yeah. Yeah, you could do it. No, and I love it because now it's just like, oh, okay, I just have to make the time. It's not that I don't have the money, you know? Yeah, I just gotta make the time. <laughs> yeah, you gotta make the time. And in between running your business. Mm -hmm. Now here comes a curveball question. How do you choose your co-stars? <laughs> I go off of vibes. Um so not like, because they're like famous in their own right. Like you don't want to depending on them. depending on. Um, if it's somebody that I like, like, and I like how they look, like, I just like how, how a certain person look, like, I like people that look good, like, I don't know, I don't really know how to put it, like, I like Name people that look good. Name some of the people you've chosen. Name some of the people you've chosen. That I have made content with or that I want to make content with? You can do both. Let's do who you have and who you want to. Um, his name, one of them is, his name is Shakur. Okay, I don't know. Um, he's from Chicago. Yeah, I have made contact with him. He was actually the first um, big person I made contact with or whatever. Okay. Um, I made contact with one of my friends, Dre Uwe. We do OnlyFans in the city. Um, okay. He's a big content person as well. Um, I want to make content with Kyle Levine. Oh, okay. He, because me and him, we vibe so good. Like we've met already, and we've because uh, he came to Detroit a couple times and stuff. And he's so he's such a sweetheart. So it's just like I can automatically see us. We have good chemistry, so yeah. our chemistry it, it hits. So, um, the Global Boy City, I want to make content with him. Um, I haven't really made content with a lot of people because, like, I'm in, I'm in Detroit, so you know it's it's. Not that many people. It's like literally me and like maybe two, three other people. But everybody moves from here once they blow up. Oh, so they go to Atlanta. So everybody's in Atlanta. Atlanta, Atlanta is where it's at. Yeah, they go to Atlanta. Yeah, they go to Atlanta. Um, I can't really name nobody off the top of my head, but like, yeah, like that's pretty much like them, them few. Um, I love Rico and Fang. I love both of them. I know. Those are my They came to Detroit just recently, not too long ago. And I was just like, <laughs> yeah those are my babies and that was the thing i loved them and followed them for years independently and then when they got together i was like oh this is just everything yeah honestly yes, um, you're amazing and you interview, you interview somebody else i want to make content with so his name oh. is joe Biden. yeah oh. light skin joe Biden. Biden. oh my he, probably, he does a lot of money yes. uh, yes. yes yeah yeah the, for everybody watching, Daddy Cream. Daddy Cream. <laughs> <laughs> that's my baby. We've been talking yeah. for years. We've been talking for years. Like that's he seems friend. so sweet. And he's so down so to earth. Cool. He's so like he is. He's so down to earth. He's so mm -hmm. cool. Like I just and that's the thing. Like and and I wanted to ask that because. Isn't it so crazy? Because people need to understand the difference between entrepreneurship and just regular layman's consumership. Now yeah. you're like, now you're like, okay, when I have sex, I want to have sex with a, the right person. The right for person. For my, you know, for my content. I want this yeah. to be good. So like people are like, oh, oh, I want, I'm trying to get at you. And you're like, mm -mm, I, have, mm -mm. I have sex for my business, my brand. Yeah, this is, it's not a fling. Yeah, it's not a we fling. Don't, we don't do these. We don't do these. That's <laughs> not a fling. Don't get me wrong. We all have our fling moments. Yes. But not with this. this yes. Is business. <laughs> yeah, this is business. It's business. It's business. Definitely. Yeah. Like, and, and you know what I love a lot? Like, all my boys have OnlyFans. All my boys have OnlyFans. And it's just amazing. Um, one of my best, my best friends, his name is Poppy Suave. And he, oh, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, he's from um, he's from Philly. He's from here, but he lives in uh, California now. And 
I just, it like people do not understand our community. Our community is, is one where we're very, because we're all men. Yeah. Pop, Poppy can send me pictures or I can, can post nude pictures on Twitter and I get them, I grab them, they're in my phone and then I write him like, boy, these pictures are- You so ate. Nice. Yeah, like they don't understand. We, we, we need, need that. that criticism from each other like, yeah. like, yeah, you did that or change this or no, nah, this is this, like, yeah. And see, like, I'm never, listen, I'm never a change this. I'm like, it worked. It worked. It's great. It was amazing. <laughs> More of that. And he has like, because he has his like colors. He has a really colorful tattoo on his chest. And now his beard is green and his one eye is orange and his hair is blonde. It just, he looks like an anime character, something sci-fi. And it's so beautiful. And I'm just like, and I, and we're always, we've been that way for years. We've been that way. Like he's one of the people that I said, when I go to Europe, I'm taking him with me. Like he's just going to be yeah. in the entourage. Like I'm just going to take him. Like, and he's always like, oh my God. And I'm just like, yes, I'm taking you. So he, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, he, so he said to me, he was just like, it's an honor to even be in your camera roll. And I'm like, bitch, stop playing with me. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know. You, like, what? I'm a beauty freak. I'm a beauty freak. I'm a Libra. I'm a beauty freak. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like, all the, I like all the things that glow and shine and have and shine. And yeah, yeah. There ain't nothing wrong with that. No, I, I live for it. I live for it, and I'm so like, I'm so like thankful because, you know, it has given just so many men. Like he's he's Puerto Rican. Like it just it has given so many men control of their bodies. And that's the thing, women, women too. And that was the thing, women too have control of their bodies with OnlyFans. But what, but what the world wasn't trying to understand is that the boys were being done dirty by the men too. Uh, uh, like, like, yeah, like they didn't understand that. Yeah, they're like, I don't understand the nigga that has OnlyFans. And we're like, you don't. You don't. Don't play because you have seen him. You've been on his Twitter, don't play. Like, don't mm. play. Like now he's getting paid for it. Oh, I don't know. Mm. Yeah, and it's just like okay, so I love it. One of my one of my babies, um, she is an amazing influencer, uh, Shauna Brooks. Oh, yeah. Oh, she she said, "Listen here, if you if I get paid to have sex, and uh, what did she say? That makes me what if it if if it makes me what did she say? I forget what kind of company, but it makes me a company basically to have sex. Mm-hmm. She's like, if you're having sex for free, what does that make you a nonprofit organization? Nonprofit organization. <laughs> and I, I see like, no lies. I saw no lies. Uh, I saw not one lie was none. told. Not a single lie was told. <laughs> not a single lie was told. I was like, and I always said it when somebody has something to say about my only fans, and I get paid. Do you? Yes, like, mm. well, no, here you go, baby. My car note is paid this month. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my car note okay. is paid. My rent paid. I don't, hey. I'm book, I don't book the flight. I'm, I'm yeah. good. Like, I'm that's good. What I love. Yeah, that's what I love because so many men, and, and me too, like I've been celibate for 10 years now, but the only reason why I did that, look, you almost, I, I thought you looked at me like, oh, no, but I've been celibate <laughs> for 10 years now because I needed to focus on my business. Like I tell people all the time, this, the queen of shade and a brand, depending on what your brand is, every brand requires undivided attention it so does. this was my brand she's classy she's a fashionista but she's like i talk i say it all on my podcast i say it in all my interviews i'm like honey no i had a very avid sex life you know so focusing on my brand but you know i just i love the fact that you know we are acknowledging that men like to show off too yeah. and that men have high sex drives and Excuse and you know, and that's crazy that you say that because I actually went through the same thing. I went through the celibacy. Like yeah. I had I had a moment, even when I had my OnlyFans, I yeah. had a moment where I was just solo. And yeah. it was I wasn't having sex. And right. it was what just sparked it. It it just I don't I, I think I think I became um when I first made an OnlyFans, I wasn't I wasn't, you know, like always confident. Like I love mm-hmm. I had self-esteem, you know. We all I, did. I was you know, in my brand, yeah. Like I used know. to let sometimes let the comments get to me and stuff like that. But yeah. I had to realize, like, look at you. You know, you gotta remember yeah. who the fuck you are. And that's what I had to do. I remember, I had to remember who I was. Yeah. And and it, I, I had to wake myself up. The celibacy kind of made me do that. I was like, you know what? I said, let me just stay to myself because I know my worth. 
Yeah. And let me go ahead and build me back up. Yeah. And I build me back up. A lot of people don't understand that, but you know, I don't let people see me sweat. Yeah. So, People might self not love is so it. important. Self love is so important. Like, it you is. know, and 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 that's my thing. I can't understand why anyone would say that someone that is in adult entertainment doesn't have self love. It's like, bitch, do you see me not posting my whole body for the world? This is now? literal. I'm showing you. Yeah, daughter. like I'm showing you that I like everything is right over here. Everything, and it's like, how could I not? have respect for myself i respect myself more than all of you even the one and you're watching you're watching that's why you're upset and that's the thing exactly. like, you're upset because you're watching too you're watching me those people people that talk so much shit about yeah, they're watching. Phone, they be the ones subscribe they yeah. be the ones retweeting they be the ones on a fake page just inbox yes. about the content they want me to sell them they probably have been my customers yes I mean, they are they probably are your customer yeah, like, yes. Yes. And it, and, it, and it's like that. It's like that. It's envious. Like, and I'm used to that, especially in the city that I come from, because yeah. it's so much competition oh, here, and it's okay. unneeded. It's yeah, it's so unneeded. It's yeah. so unneeded. And I'm starting to realize it's the same everywhere. I mean, with yeah. me traveling, it made me realize like everybody does the same thing in different ways. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Honestly. yeah. And you know, I just. I love, first of all, I love how confident you are. I love how talented you are. I love how beautiful you are. I had no idea you were that tall, but now, now that you tell me that you're that tall, it's why your pictures come out really well. Like, you know, your angles and, and you know how to work that body. And that is, that's the, that's amazing. Like, and that's the thing, like, cause I, even with all of my photos, I take all my photos myself. Yeah, me too. And being that like, it's, it's very hard, like when I, because I'm tall, so it's very hard to find a mirror to fit in. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I'm always cut off up here. Yeah. Or I can't see right here. Or yeah. it's like, like, it's difficult because I'm, I'm, I'm a giant. And I, this and this happened overnight. Like, I literally, one day I woke up, I was five, seven, and one day I woke up six foot. Yeah. And it just kept going. Yeah. Like, I was five, five for so long. And then I just oh. had a growth spurt. I'm glad you did though. Tall is in, honey. Tall. Yeah, tall is in. Everybody in my family is tall. Nice. So. I'm five eleven. I'm I'm shy of six feet. I'm I'm so mad about that. But you know, I can still do fashion. I was still able to do fashion. Most women, if I do women's clothing, five eleven is the tall. So and but the yeah, thing. My is, six my, foot. Oh, see, see, six feet. Go ahead, girl. No, but like it's also the proportions and the face. Like you gotta yeah. have a lot of. You other. gotta have that look. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yes. And if you do, it speaks for us. So. Yes, it does. Yes. <laughs> so as we wrap up, tell me. Okay. Yes, I'm going to ask the question. <laughs> I'm going to ask the question. No, so. <laughs> I'm going to answer it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to answer it. So your posting schedule. Do you find yourself always making content and saying, I'm gonna put that in the vault. I'm gonna say that for later. I'm gonna put that in the vault because I want them to understand the difference between, oh, I'm just casually taking a picture and no, this is my business. So I'm gonna take all of these series of pictures and I'm gonna save them and I'm gonna release them later. Like, do you find that you're more mentally that way or is it just like- I've, I've no became stuff? that way. Okay. Because you know, okay, at first, like, yeah, over time it was just, okay, let me just take a picture of everything, but- I had to realize that when, when you know, you know, when you know, when it's time to do business, like I just get that feeling. And being that I love money, yeah. I always have this tingle of like, my hand gets itching or something. My hand gets itching. Capricorn. <laughs> Capricorn. Y'all can get to a dollar. Yeah. I swear to God. I Capricorn. swear to God. <laughs> and I love, I just, I love. I love when I get that tingle because I'm like, it's time to make money. Or I'll just, sometimes I get bored and I'll be like, okay, well, let me just go ahead and ask content. Like, might as well. It depends. And, and it also depends on my Twitter activity because I know when to post. Uh -huh. like, I, I've, I've put my followers on a schedule uh -huh. of when of when it's blowing up the most and when what yeah. to post. So I don't overdo it. Yeah. Because yeah, when you overdo it is what makes people not want to subscribe to your only fancy a lot of people don't understand that you have to post certain things yeah. and certain lengths of videos yeah. and stuff like that because you don't want to give them too much yeah you want to tease them a little bit so they can go ahead and click on that link like, let me go ahead and see right, right. twitter uh -huh. is the teaser twitter is the teaser. Is. Yeah, yeah twitter is the teaser 
Yeah, it's all strategic. Yes, it's all. It really is. It really is. It really is. Every every single one of us, everyone out here walking around is a brand, and we can't help the fact that they haven't started, you know, investing in their own brand. Investing. Yeah, mm-hmm. like you got to invest in your own brand. You do. My God. So, give me three words that inspire you. To be yourself, to be who you are, to do what you do. Drive. Uh-huh. Uh, um, survival. Uh-huh. God. Yeah. Now tell us why. Um, drive because, like I said, I've had a hard upbringing. So <laughs> like, even with my parents being there, I went through a lot. And I had to push myself, which is where the motivation comes in. Yeah. And it's just like... Um, I can't, I can't give up. I can't give up. I have younger siblings and I, and, and you know, they, they look up to me. Like, they're my mini me's. So yeah. I have people that look up to me, even in like me and my friends, like we, we motivate each other. So, yeah. and God, because without anything, God is in everything. He is everything. Yes, he is. <laughs> Yes, he so, did. that in itself speaks for itself. He, did. he made that gorgeous body. Yes, he did. Yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes, he did. They can't listen. That's God's work, baby. That's okay. God's work. It's not God. That's God. That's God. That's God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tell everybody, before we go, tell everybody where they can find you on social media. I'm going to put all the links below the video, but still, tell everybody where they can find you. My Instagram is Zay Two X Z A Y Y Two X. My my Twitter is D E T Z A Y Y. Yes. Um. Yep. Yeah, my sub name would be Detroit Zay. Uh, you can find me on Facebook at Xavier Talent. My full name. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah, and yeah. Oh my God. Thank you so much for sitting down. I enjoyed you. And I I enjoyed you as well. I have to bring you back in like six months so we can find out if you went to Amsterdam. Okay, we could definitely. Yes, because you got to go. And my thing is, see, that's okay. Marketability. You gotta, uh, you gotta advertise. I'm going to the UK. You gotta, you gotta get to the UK followers. You gotta get to the Netherlands. Like they will, child. You'll, yeah, because I have a couple. There, yeah. I, I have a couple. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you let them know. Yeah, you let them know I'm coming, and yeah, I'll show you a real Definitely. time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm gonna have so much tea for you next time. I can't yes. wait. Yes. <laughs> wait. All right, say goodbye, but don't go anywhere. Say goodbye to everybody. Bye, everybody. Have a good yeah. one. Thank you so much for having. You're so welcome. Now I have I have to do my thing, ladies and gentlemen. You have heard the vocal stylings of. One word, Zay. Okay, hold on, don't go anywhere.